Welcome. Hey, it's February 8th, 2021. My name is Les Solgrove. This is Simply Des Moines 15-Minute Market Update. And it is Monday after the Super Bowl. The Kansas City Chiefs got trounced yesterday evening, 31-9. to Tampa Bay are the new Super Bowl champs. Way to go, Tom Brady. Um, you know, they, they said this was going to be a high-scoring game. They were half right, 31-9. to um, I can't imagine that uh, somebody probably guessed that. But anyway, uh, welcome to the show. It's it's a Monday morning and it's cold outside. My, my gauge says it's negative 0.2. So it's just under zero degrees. <sighs> it's cold down here in my office. So let's uh, jump right into the show today here. Um, the show this week is is going to be pretty quick. Uh, you know, we're going to just kind of hit some of the highlights this week, and then next week we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, a, a different topic here um, where prices are kind of going here. But uh, let's jump right in here and get started this week. So the number one topic this past week in the top stories was we've, we've uh, hit 1,000 closed sales already this year. And what this graphic shows you is we're doing it faster this year. In fact, we've done it faster the last couple of years than we have in previous years. It only took us 36 days to hit that 1,000 sale mark, where last year was 45 days, so we were middle middle of February. Um, but if you look back all the way 10 years ago, it took twice as long, twice as many days, 75 days to hit a thousand sales in our MLS back in 2011. Now, of course, we had fewer. Um, our, our market has kind of expanded a little bit over the last 10 years, uh, so that's kind of adding to that. But still, 36 days to hit 1,000 sales is a pretty good um, benchmark for telling you how fast the market's moving here in the Des Moines Central, in the Des Moines and Central Iowa market. And this will be a graphic that I'll update each month. I'll show you this same graphic for February when we hit 2,000. Well, assuming we hit it in February. Um, but every time we hit 1,000, I'll, I'll bring this graphic out. So the next graphic out will say 2,000. And then I'll try to show you the overlay to see kind of where the where the trending is. So just kind of a fun graphic to look at each uh, each. Uh, month or every every thousand sales as we go by. The other top story this past week, yeah, 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 you can hit, I'm saying this every single week, it seems like, another all-time low. Uh, we hit that on February 3rd. We hit uh, 1,965 homes for sale. And honestly, I don't think we're done. Um, you know, if you look right here, you can see the trend still kind of hits downward until we get into the first part of March. And frankly, with the, the cold weather we're having this week, I predict we're going to drop below that 1965 only because, if for no other reason, uh, we may not be able to get signs in yards or we might just not be able to get, you know, sellers to say, let's pull the trigger and put our houses on the market during, um, you know, below zero temps. So uh, some of these records are, are weather-induced. Others are just uh, activity-induced. But I think we're going to see this red line uh, drop here just a little bit here as we move forward. So let's take a look at the week in review. And we're just going to hit some highlights on this as well. The for sale inventory, you know, obviously listings are down. We're seeing listings down this last week or two just because I think of weather. Uh, we, we did see another round of price increases in the new construction area. 144 homes were um, had price increases. That's 126 over a year ago at this time. And then price reductions were also uh, just down a little bit, although we had 130 price reductions. That's still below behind the pace of the same time last year. Our sale pending market and sold market here had a 311 homes uh, went under contract this past week, and that's 115 faster than a year ago. Uh, our back on the market only had 35 homes, and that's pretty good. You know, we're staying around that 10, 11%. If we could do that all year, that would be very good. But, um, you know, so one in 10 homes basically this past week came back on the market. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good low number. We'd like to see that down around that 10%. And, of course, we talked a minute ago, there's our uh, – we broke 1,000 – 
sales here, and that's 158 ahead of uh, last year at this time. Not sure if it's Super Bowl Sunday, the weather combination, uh, COVID still hanging on there, but boy, our open house counts are way down. Oops, I just hit that again. Our open house counts are just way down. Um, we're at 396 open houses total this past week. That's a 50% reduction over the same time a year ago. So, um, you know, just kind of uh, interesting times there. I always say that it's always interesting times, but um, it, it really is kind of interesting here to see where our open house counts are going. You know, only 58 homes were held open this past week that were resale, the rest were new construction. So predominantly it was a new construction weekend. So we'll jump into the spotlight here. This is the meat of the, the program today. We're gonna to look back at some of the highlights from January and of, uh, so like a month in review here. And this graphic shows you, again, inventory. The red line is our, our downward trailing inventory levels through the month of January. So our inventory started uh, between about 2,200 homes and we're now down right around that 2,000 or a little under 2,000 homes for sale. But I like this graphic because it shows some trending. So the blue line, this was 2020, and you can see that the blue line was trending pretty much right along with the last prior three years to that. So 2017 through 2019 until we hit COVID. And of course we saw the blue line, this is last year's inventory uh, dropped pretty dramatically. But look at this, this, you know, we were right on track um, the last uh, 2019 through 2017 we were actually uh, increasing our inventory. So 2017 is this purple line, green is 2018, yellow is 2019, and 2020 was blue. And look at this, we were actually building our inventory levels each uh, year, month over, you know, month over month, um, until last year when our COVID uh, situation hit. Um, but what's most interesting is that, you know, if, if COVID wouldn't have hit, we could be sitting at uh, around 36, 3,700 homes on the market right now. And boy, I think that would have been, you know, can you imagine a market that we're in right now with uh, about 2,000 homes for sale? If we had another 1,700 homes on the market, um, you know, I'm not sure how the, you know, if the buyers would be buying up at the same pace, but it certainly would, would give us uh, a little bit more uh, feeling of, of comfort knowing that we had more homes. So, um, we definitely are still deep, deep into this um, low inventory market here. Some of the highlights of the different categories of listings and listing activity for the last month are new listing counts were about 589 new homes came on the market last month. 1,200 of those homes went, 1,200 homes went under contract. So we're selling at a two to one ratio here. We're selling for every home that comes on, we're selling and putting two homes under contract. And that's why our inventory is continuing to drop. Our closed sales at the end of January were 877. And of course, we added a few more that last uh, six days of, into February. And that put us over the 1,000. But we ended the month of January at 877. Uh, again, our back on market numbers are, are looking really good for January, um, whether it's just because the market is, you know, too many people are, don't want to get back out and look at houses again. They're working harder to keep them together. It's hard to say. Uh, our price increases are up this past month, and I think we'll see this trend a little bit higher this year, just basically because of that new construction. So price increases or price reductions are about normal, about 450 is our kind of our normal for January. We're at 469. So that is that highlight. Uh, the breakdown of our months of inventory. I like to show this. This is from January. And this graphic shows you a breakdown of months of inventory by price range. And, you know, months of inventory, I always like to define this, but it's the, the amount of time it would take to sell out all of the homes that are currently on the market if new, no, no new homes were added. And so looking at the bottom here, under a $100,000 price point, um, basically what that says is that, you know, in about one and a half months, you know, another 45 days from now, if no new homes come on the market, we're out of homes for sale in that under hundred under the $100,000 price point. We have less than a 30 day supply in that 100 to 200, which is our most active and popular price point. Now, um, we kind of break these uh, ranges down into upper price range, middle price range, and the lower price range here. And 
so when you start to see at the top of the upper price point, you look at this one here, the 900 to a million, you go 16 months of inventory. Boy, it must be just dead in that market. It, that's kind of a false um, narrative there because what, what really happens is there's so few homes for sale or so much fewer homes for sale when you, the higher you get in our price point that just because of the way that this metric happens, it you know, if, if maybe we only had a couple of sales in this price point, um, it, it will really exaggerate that months of inventory. So when you have less data to work with, um, one or two sales can really make this category swing. Um, but it does give you an idea that the upper price point is, is a little bit slower. And so with that, let's jump into the next slide. So remember this upper end, middle end range and lower range here. Um, I like to break those down by what I call buyer pools. And the buyer pool is, you know, the lower end is kind of your first time home buyers, your people just getting out and buying a home for the first time. And, and they're kind of on average spending up to around 200. The middle price ranges is kind of that midpoint where either they're moving up or maybe somebody's moving down from the upper price points. So um, this is also a pretty active market because it's affected by both ends. It's affected by upper price point uh, home sellers moving down and and maybe uh, first time home sellers in the under 200 moving up to become second move up buyers in the middle range. And then the above 400 is obviously our high point. And when you average all together, this is why I say, uh, you know, you look at that previous graphic and there were several that were a couple of them that were above that um, seller's market range. But by the time you average it all out, uh, basically the above 400 market price point is still within what I define as a seller's market. And that's between, um, you know, zero and four months of inventory. So less than four months of inventory just says that our market is at a pace where it's really favoring sellers. We have more seller, we have more buyers than we have sellers. So that will supply and demand uh, metric kind of comes into play. Looking at um, the the same price points again, that, that uh, zero up, in $100,000 increments, just where is the inventory for sale? And this, you know, this is kind of a, a pretty good testament. You know, a year ago, that's what the shaded one is. A year ago, we had 247 homes for sale in the under $200,000 price point. This year, we're at 97. So, you know, one and a half times uh, more a year ago than we had at this time. It's just, just, um, amazing that we're even able to find any homes for buyers right now. 312 in the hundred to $200,000 price point right now for sale, where we're used to having around 800. And that was still down from, you know, kind of a long time, you know, a couple of years back here. 761 to 1143 and then 448 to 693. That's kind of the, the, the bulk of our market. Um, you know, once you get above that 400, the the gap starts to lessen a little bit. So about a hundred less homes in the four to 500 market. And then as you get up into the upper price point, you can see we're kind of uh, on track with where we normally have our inventory. Um, but, you know, suffice to say, we have 1,510 fewer homes on the market today or at the end of January than we had um, a year ago at this time. Uh, as far as the number of homes under contract, this is the, the homes that have offers accepted. And again, you know, we kind of tend to outsell or outpace our our inventory. Um, the one exception here is under a hundred thousand dollar price point. We actually have fewer homes under contract right now than we had a year ago, and predominantly that's just because there's such few there's so few homes for sale under that hundred under hundred thousand dollar price point right now. With price appreciations last year around that five five and a half percent it's kind of bumping the, you know, most of the inventory in this above um, $100,000 $100, price point. So we did see a, a little bit of a drop uh, as far as homes impending, but um, above that, you can see we're, we're still outpacing uh, the same time last year, all the way until you hit, well, pretty much all the way until that $900,000 and above marketplace. And then even above the million dollar, we had seven homes under contract in January, uh, versus the, the went under contract in January versus two during the same period in, a year ago. So just kind of, um, you know, uh, a little bit um, interesting uh, what's happening in the marketplace. So, so um, 
Actually, I jumped that gun there with that graphic. Uh, one more spotlight. This is just kind of a reminder that the 2020 year-end recap uh, report is still out there and available at uh, Simply Des Moines Stats. This is the full 2020 year in review. This is the, the one that we went over last week, and that I have uh, all the graphics and slides are available at uh, either. The full presentation is recorded on YouTube, uh, on my YouTube channel at Simply Des Moines. And, of course, all the stats are available at uh, Simply Des Moines Stats on Facebook with 70-plus graphics out there of, of what happened in 2020. So feel free to kind of peruse that and see what kind of happened in the market. So now let's talk about what's happening next week. Next week we're going to look at pricing um, and kind of get an idea of where prices are headed, list prices to sell prices, and uh, hopefully you'll join me next week because I think it's going to be an interesting time to see kind of where our market has gone. So, hey, with that, it's been 15 minutes. Thanks again for joining me. My name is Les Solgrove. This is Simply Des Moines 15-minute uh, market update, and we'll see you all next week.